best at letting go. What is up, you guys? So today I'm going to be showing you guys kind of like a Nainoa Langer tutorial, kind of. Um, we're just going to be analyzing his style, and I'm just going to show you a few of some of the effects that he uses. So let's get started with the video. So, so for any of you who don't know who Nainoa Langer is, I'm just going to show you this video that he made. And a lot of people were asking me about this certain part where the camera's all blurry and all that, and it's literally very simple from this last clip he pans down very fast and then he just has a bunch of random clips and speeds it all up and adds some motion blur on it and i'll show you how to do that it's honestly so simple like it's all in the camera move it just literally just shake your camera in a bunch of different directions and then speed it up and then add some blurring and then he uses a lot of hyperlapses and like faded transitions and he also uses some of the zoom in and masking effects. So let's get started with the actual tutorial. Okay, so I have Adobe Premiere Pro open right now and I just gathered a bunch of different clips that I want to create like a little cinematic sequence of. Um, so as we're watching this clip, you can see that this first clip is literally like nothing. I would not use it in my actual sequence, but I thought it was good because it has a lot of movement and I could just move it and speed it up and blur it around. And then we have this clip of me, and that's what I would use in the sequence. And then I have a clip of a building, but then it starts to shake, and that's when I know I want to speed it up. And then I have another clip of me walking. And then below that, I have uh, a part of the song that I want to use. And then later on in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how he kind of does a faded ending, like a muffled ending. So stay tuned for that, but first I'm going to copy all of these four clips and then right click and press replace with After Effects Composition. So this is the um, dynamic link between Premiere Pro and After Effects. So now I can work on the project in After Effects and it links back to my Premiere Pro pod project. So whatever I do in After Effects will affect my actual project. I'm just going to turn off the volume on all of these. Okay, so with this first clip, I know I want to speed it up because this clip is like useless. So I'm going to right click and go to time and then time stretch. And then I'm going to change the stretch factor to two. So now it's like speeded up by a lot. This is kind of going to be a tutorial on you watching me and then me kind of explaining everything. Because when you're actually editing like and making an edit, you kind of like play around with all the sizes and like timing and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm just adjusting the time on this. And then I just split the clip by pressing command shift D and I'm going to add some blurring to this. So I can kind of get like that blur look that he gets when he like moves his camera everywhere instead of actually doing it handheld anyways. And then I'm going to add my third clip on the bottom so that it transitions in. So I'm going to go to effects and presets and search up fast blur and I'm going to add it to both clips so both of them kind of blur in different directions. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make the blurriness 61 and then I'm going to change the blur dimensions to horizontal so that we have like a direction that the blur is moving and I'm also going to press repeat edge pixel so you don't see like the edges kind of black. And then with the second one, I'm also going to press, press repeat edge pixels, drag the blurriness up, and then I'm going to change it to vertical instead. So now you kind of see this like quick blur, like it's like moving right and then moving up, which I think is cool. Okay, so now I'm going to work with my fourth clip. So I'm going to press command shift D to where I actually want the clip. Because it starts to get shaky afterwards, and I don't want that stuff. I'm just going to speed it up. I'm also going to Command Shift D over here, because it starts to get smooth again, and I could actually use some of this footage in my video. So I'm going to take the part that I want to speed up, and I'm going to drag it to the front where everything is speed up, and I'm going to right-click, press Time, and Time Stretch, and adjust the factor to um, 2 again. And then I'm going to add fast blur again, and you know the process. Repeat edge pixels, horizontal, and blur it. So you kind of see this very quick, like, blur. And then I'm going to add my clip of the buildings where I actually liked it. I'm actually going to switch my 
uh, two clips because I think the buildings would look better first because I already have the blur in front of it. And I'm going to go ahead and use one of the transitions that Nainoa uses a lot. I'm going to go to Effects and Presets and search up CC Image Wipe. And then I'm going to double click and add that to my first clip. Now I'm going to press the keyframe button and then go a couple frames forward to where I want to transition out. And then I'm going to go all the way to 100. So if we watch it back, we kind of get this cool like faded look. And I think it's cool because you can kind of see like the end of the buildings kind of fade with it. Kind of fade like after everything actually. And now I'm going to drag my third main clip all the way to the front. And for this transition, I'm going to go back to my previous clip. And I'm going to show you how he does his, like, very simple fade. I'm sure, like, a lot of you guys know this already. But I'll show it to you guys anyways. So I'm going to go to my previous clip. And then I'm going to click the drop down, transform, and then go to opacity. And then from where I want the transition to start, I'm going to press the keyframe button, and then I'm going to go all the way to the end, and then press zero. So now you can see this, like, very simple fade. So because I see people walking right now, and I know I use um, this a lot, I'm going to reverse the clip. So what you can do is we can click on this clip that I want to reverse, right click, go to time, and press time reverse layer. So now this clip is going in the reverse direction. Ah, so right now I see a good place to mask out this guy. So I'm actually just going to Command Shift D and split the clip kind of in half. I'm actually going to Command D and that's going to duplicate the clip. And then I'm going to drag it over. So you can see that it goes backward and then forward again. I'm going to bring my last clip all the way to the front so that I kind of know where I want to transition this clip into. So now what I'm going to do is, because Nainoa uses this effect, I didn't even plan on doing this, I'm going to mask out this guy, but I'm going to speed it up. I'm going to have to link you to a tutorial where I actually showed you step by step how to mask someone. So yeah, I'm just going to mask this very quickly, and honestly, it's going to look terrible because I'm not going to make this precise at all. But you'll see it at the end. We'll see. Okay, so I finished masking this out, and I want to make the time stretch a little bit faster because this is terrible masking, and I don't want you to see like every bit of the clip. I'm actually going to add some motion blurring, so this is how you do it. I could have feathered it as well, but I'm just going to add motion blurring. So, we can check this box where it has like three circles, four circles maybe, um, next to the clip that I want to motion blur, which is this masking one. And then at the top, there's also the same pattern, and I'm going to click that as well. So, if we watch it back, we can see some of the blurring on this guy. So, I speed this up to 50 so that it goes twice as fast and then I'm dragging my last bit a bit forward so you can see that my next clip shows up okay so that looks pretty smooth right now okay so I think I'm liking this so I'm gonna go back to After Effects so I'm just gonna condense it down to where my last clip kinda ends okay so now I'm gonna show you how he works with his audio so at the end of a lot of his edits, he kind of makes the ending muffled, and even in his vlog series, he does this too. So first, I'm just going to have my clip cut to where I want it to start muffling. Here, I have cut the end of my song um, where I want it to start muffling, and um, here, you can listen to it. So I want this ending to be muffled because it's we know that the edit is over. So I'm going to go to Effects and search up Low Pass. Put that on there. And then let's hear it now. See, now you can hear that muffled sound. If you think it sounds weird because it's not like fading in, 
we can make it fade in by making a keyframe here and then we're gonna keep that a little bit after the clip starts go to back to the beginning and then go all the way up on um, about 2800 doesn't really matter this more than 2000 is good and if you want the ending to fade out as well I'm gonna search up constant gain and drag that to the ending now that fades out the music so yeah that's how you do that whole muffled effect okay so that's the tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it um please give it a thumbs up if you did okay so a few other tutorials I want to link you to which I have already made are the masking effect the luma key effect because he uses that as well and also my latest zoom in, zoom out effect because he uses that also. And he likes to use that within his time lapses where he kind of fades out as he's moving um, backwards. Subscribe for more videos, comment something fun below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.